Well, good evening, everyone. It's Tuesday and it's the 26th. And as we're winding down this month of June, rainfall totals are winding up for the viewing area. And that's something we haven't had to deal with. We'll talk about that the first and the immediate part of the program and before we leave you tonight. Right now, just a glimpse ahead shower already starting to fall, some significant rainfall that the viewing area for the most part, and certainly by comparison, has been left out of for days. With some other parts of eastern Kentucky and the central part of the state as well, getting in on some repeated storm systems and showers and cells moving over and adding up Harlan County, just inundated with water, major flash flooding there. Storm systems dumping as much or having the potential to dump as much as up to eight inches an hour in total rainfall. And we all have a very good understanding of what that would do to Sagersville, McGoffin County, Johnson County, Paintsville, and the rest of the viewing area. So we'll talk more about the rain that's already falling and starting to pick up and just what we expect to see. This is really the first real round of it that we're seeing here. Um, under or over the newsroom and in the viewing area we've got another round late tonight and maybe another significant round tomorrow and that's where we'll focus our attention just before we leave you uh, as we are going to talk about the flooding potential in much more detail in just a few moments the Sagersville City Council met last night we've got coverage from that we've also got more on the vacant seat in the McGoffin County Fiscal Court as uh, we've received word from uh, the Executive Administrative Secretary for the Office of the Governor earlier today who spoke with our editor Heather Oney I'll tell you what we can confirm and how if someone is interested and applying to be appointed to that seat until the November election, you can do so. Uh, we've also got another uh, update in regards to an ongoing McGoffin County Sheriff's Department investigation in regards to hoping that you may be able to find uh, who the proper owner is of a lot of belongings they confiscated per an ongoing investigation. First and foremost, only one other report besides all of that, and that comes from the Supreme Court, who earlier today upheld President Trump's travel ban. The ruling prevents entry and tightens restrictions for travelers to the United States from majority Muslim-majority countries such as Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote the opinion and said so in doing that the issue came down to the power of the president. Quote, the proclamation is squarely within the scope of presidential authority. Now, as for what this means, very little impact. This travel ban has been in place since the first of the year. Although there's been a series of lower court rulings that have dismissed or thrown out the travel ban, it has pretty much been in place and in effect since December pending this final ruling. The ban allows the administration to keep out or heavily vet any person from those listed countries uh, who does not have a significant reason or significant relationship uh, to be inside the United States. It was a five to four court majority today in the ruling that determined the president's position did not constitute religious discrimination. Justices wrote, or at least, excuse me, Justice Roberts wrote that, quote, we express no view on the soundness of the policy. Not all agreed, Justices uh, Stephen Breyer in his dissent uh, and others, I believe, wrote that they found evidence, they believed, of anti-religious bias. Judge Sotomayor wrote in her dissent that a reasonable observer would conclude that the proclamation was motivated as anti-Muslim animus. From there, just a quick update before we get to our other top stories, including coverage from last night's Sagersville City Council, uh, exchanges between the mayor and a councilman yet again, in much similarity, but a little more tense than in previous meetings. But for now, an update from the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department. They had someone come in claiming some property today, but still a great deal of property to uh, be unclaimed, and they're hoping that someone out there will recognize some of these items they recovered just days ago. Sheriff's Deputy Jonathan Holbrook called the newsroom earlier today on behalf of Sheriff Montgomery, who said that charges against Alex Fletcher are going to be bound over to the grand jury. Charges of disorderly conduct, resisting, menacing, theft of an automobile, and public intoxication charges, and possibly some others as well. It's part of an ongoing investigation in which the Sheriff's Department responded to a report of Fletcher allegedly stealing parts off of a car where, where it still sat on the actual owner's property uh, that vehicle which 
ultimately disappeared, and I'm not for certain as to whether or not it's been recovered as of yet. Several parts off that vehicle that Fletcher is alleged to have stolen uh, were found on his vehicle, which matched the make and model in regards to a windshield that still had wet sealant or epoxy or silicone around it where it had just been placed into his vehicle. But it was inside his car that I told you a couple of days ago that after obtaining a search warrant, that the sheriff's department found a long laundry list of items that they believe most certainly are stolen. In fact, just today, someone came into the Sheriff's Department claiming several items of the uh, evidence that were found, musical instruments, hand tools, electronics, jewelry, a personal safe, the list goes on. And they want me to run this one more time in hopes that someone out there might see something uh, that they may not even realize was taken from them, um, but indeed was. Possibly a lot of items from the Lick Creek area, other parts of McGoffin County, uh, all of which they're trying to identify and maybe return to their proper owner. So if any of these items do look familiar in any form or fashion, uh, including car parts from a newer model vehicle, everything from hand tools to copper tubing uh, and pipe to chains and straps and things of all nature, uh, a canteen, and the list goes on. If any of this looks familiar and you may be the owner, please contact the McGoffin County Sheriff's Department at 349-2914. This is a bag of electronics, I believe a couple of cameras and some other items, uh, which were also part of those received, rather recovered in that vehicle, including a very specific collection, if you will, of dolls that they believe may belong to someone as well. I'll be right back. Just in at Gateway Motors, this 2010 Traverse, dual panoramic roof, rear entertainment center, third row seating under 10 grand, and two just reduced specials. This 2011 Caravan has been cut $1,000 down to $89.95, and this 2006 Tacoma books for $10.5, and right now it's got to go at $79.95. And all vehicles come with a warranty at dealer cost. And there's a guaranteed $1,000 minimum trade on just about everything on the lot at Gateway Motors in Sagersville. Place does oil and fluid changes, brakes, suspension, wheel alignments, and more. They've got thousands of tires in stock every day, and they won't be undersold on any tire they sell. They've got six months, same as cash, and over 37 years of service to the viewing area. With no appointment necessary, or you can call 297-2424. Hi, I'm attorney Jeff Lovely. When hiring an attorney, experience does matter. For over 20 years, I've been representing clients throughout Eastern Kentucky. We are a full service law firm, representing clients who've been injured in car accidents or at work, representing clients who need to file bankruptcy, representing clients who've been charged with a crime. For all your legal needs, contact my office when it matters. We have two locations for your convenience, in Sayersville at 349-4522 and West Liberty at 743-1965. Foothills Communications brings you the latest in fast fiber internet for home, business, or gaming. HD digital TV with DVR, pay-per-view, and all the favorite channels you're looking for, plus crystal clear communications. Customize your experience today and become a platinum customer simply by signing up for Fibernet Phone and TV and save at least $10 off your monthly bill. The world awaits at Foothills Communications and Foothills.net. Your best solution for diesel performance, upgrades, service, and repair is also a full-service repair center for all vehicles, gas, or diesel, from routine service to major repairs with a trusted auto body shop for minor dings to full-on restorations and rebuilds. Plus, get all your 4x4 accessories, lights, bumpers, winches, and more at Black Smoke Performance in Dixie of Sagersville, 349-8785. Pelfrey's Fireworks has been the area's king of pyrotechnics for 56 years, and this year they've got over 500 different products, smoke bombs to 500 gram grand finales, bottle rockets to big rockets to big three inch mortars. It's what the pros use. And cut these coupons out of this week's Sagersville Independent and get a $50 nine shot 500 gram box for only $18. A 24 shot of artillery shells, not 120 bucks, but $59. The $310 Pro Artillery Shell Box for only $59. Get 25 Saturn missiles for just a buck or six pack of shells for just $4. At two locations off US 23 North in Paintsville by Jim's Plaza or the Prestonsburg Superstore on the southbound lanes of US 23 at the bottom of what I always call the Holiday Inn Hill. 
plus other discounts up to 45% and all active and retired military and first responders get another 15% off. And kids 12 and under come in, free sparklers and snap and pops for all. At Sagersville National Bank, they know your house is much more than your home. It's an investment, and for many of us, the biggest we'll ever make. And whether it's for needed repairs and maintenance, or a new addition or renovation to give you some more room and more equity, let Sagersville National Bank deal with all the financial work and worry. Real and real competitive, hometown, homegrown, home improvement loans at Sagersville National. If you want to be moved, if you want to be surprised by design, then you must make it to Walter's Mazda Mitsubishi in Pikeville, where for a limited time, brand new 2018 Outlander Sports are just $20,500. New 2018 Mirage is $11,990, and they come with 43 miles per gallon. And 2018 Eclipses, with their signature styling and safety, only $22,900. That's Walter's Mazda Mitsubishi on North Mayo Trail in Pikeville. Parkway Pharmacy, a pharmacy your family can trust, and now a pharmacy where you can get your refills with a click and have them waiting for you usually within an hour. Go to parkwayfharmacy1.com. Just register once and hit refill and pick it up. Fast, easy, and efficient. Parkwayfharmacy1.com. As I confirmed to you on last night's program, there is a vacant seat on the McGoffin County Fiscal Court, that of now former Magistrate Gary Rooster Reisner of District 1. Reisner, of course, held on to his seat and did not resign therefrom, collecting his pay as he had uh, while in the federal penitentiary on vote buying or election fraud charges. And only after his appeal was affirmed or his decision was affirmed and the appeal was denied just last week has that seat now become vacant and we have some new information and details from holly hoyan she's the executive administrative secretary for the office of governor matt bevan in speaking with our editor earlier today hoyan said that the governor's office did receive notice from McGoffin County Court Clerk Renee Shepard that there was a vacancy on the McGoffin County Fiscal Court. She said that they received that notice from the clerk on Monday, June the 18th, a week ago yesterday, which was also the day that Gary Rooster Reisner's appeal was finalized. Shepard then, according to Julian, forwarded them a copy, that being the governor's office of the ruling, and she confirmed yesterday that the governor has 30 days from the 18th to appoint someone to fill the vacant seat of magistrate in District 1 in McGoffin County until November is the election. She says that anyone wanting to apply to fill the position or with questions about the process can call Holly Hullion at 502-564-2611. The extension is 370. Her email address, and I guess I'm working from the bottom up, my apologies. Her email address is holly.hullion at ky.gov. But she also said the easiest way for someone to apply who wants to do so is through Governor Bevan's website at governor.ky.gov. And once you go to there, go to the Boards and Commissions page to apply for the magistrate position or print off the application. She did confirm that her office has received applications, but she couldn't tell our editor how many or from whom. I've got a couple of birthday wishes kicking off the calendar before we get to city council coverage. A happy 38th birthday to Tanya Jenkins. Love Terry, love Trenton, love family, love a lot of friends too. Happy 38th birthday to Tanya Jenkins. And I've got an eighth birthday wish going out tonight to Noah Holbrook. Love Nanny, love Granddad, and the Wolfpack. How cool is that? Happy eighth birthday, Noah Holbrook. I've also got one that just came in that pertains to free sports physicals for all McGoffin County and Johnson County student athletes. I'll get to that in just a second. I don't have it typed in, but I'll tell you about it. Uh, another reminder, Autism Speaks and Morgan County ARH putting together their Superhero 5K July the 7th. You can register prior to or the day thereof. It will begin at 5 o'clock that day of the 7th at Old Mill Park in West Liberty. Walk, run, go at your own speed, your own pace. 
register and just go and watch whatever you can do to help this wonderful, wonderful cause. You can contact Kayla Atkins at Morgan County ARH if you have any questions. Kindergarten Roundup is set for July the 6th at North McGoffin Elementary. Get your little buckaroo on down for some awesome fun. Uh, kindergarten Camp, July the 6th, 9 to 2. They're providing lunch, they have fun games, a tour of the school, a school bus ride, snacks, and more. 9 to 2. Once again, North McGoffin Elementary. Man, school is going to be here whoo, before you know it. Oh, I hate to even bring that one up. Jumpstart, the Jumpstart reading program for students in grades one through four who may be having trouble reading, dyslexia, or other issues. This is a great way to get them a jump start. Brought to you by the Covington Scottish Rite Foundation. It's at the Mountain Arts Center, July the 30th through August the 3rd. Here's the contact information, 859-991-0504 for Marlene Jones or Susan Waters at fuse.net. They've got a lot planned. They have a lot of fun, and they're going to help give everyone a jump start in reading, grades one through four. And a special invitation to all our special needs kids in McGoffin County. The Masonic Lodge of Sagersville is putting this together, and everyone's on board for a wonderful day of fun. Not until August the 4th, but the sooner they hear who's coming, the sooner they can make all the wonderful plans. And I'll tell you more about it later, but uh, there's a preseason sports expo coming up at the Paintsville High School, Tuesday, July the 10th, the McGoffin County High School, Tuesday, July the 17th, and Johnson Central, Tuesday, July the 24th, free sports physicals physicals uh, provided by Paul B. Hall, who is hosting that. I'll get it on the calendar and remind you about it in a few days. And going on to funeral service announcements, a service announcement in honor of Delcy Gilliam Johnson. 94 of Old Lick Creek Road, who passed away today, preceded in death by her husband, Clyde. She survived by daughters Carol Smith Spradlin and Rita Salyer and son, Lawson Johnson. Visitation will be after 6 o'clock tomorrow. Services will begin in her honor Thursday at 1, all from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And I now have, even though the screen doesn't show it, I now have the arrangements in honor of Johnny Ray Van Hoos, 61 of Lick Branch Road, who passed away this week, survived by his wife, Judy Howard Van Hoos, and a son, Jason and Ray Van Hoos. Visitation will start after 5 o'clock tomorrow. It will continue all day Thursday. Services will be Friday at 2. Both visitation and services from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. And I don't have it on screen, but just a reminder that services are going to be held tomorrow at 1 for Wayne Douglas Reed of Johnson Fork, who survived by his wife Judy and son Stephen Reed and daughter Sarah Reed. Visitation the rest of this evening. Services start tomorrow at 1 from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Human, Because we're not perfect, we tend to make mistakes. Unfortunately, some mistakes are severe and carry more consequences than others. If you have been hurt in a car wreck, a truck wreck, or because of someone's mistake, reckless or careless behavior, you deserve help with your medical expenses, lost wages, and serious permanent pain and injuries that you have been made to suffer and will continue to suffer for the rest of your life. If you have been injured, I can help. I'm attorney Don Wayne McFarland. Call me and let me go to work for you. 349-9000. Wanting you to have a healthier life means providing access to quality, affordable health care. And to do exactly that, Hope Family Medical Center offers full dental care with Dr. Pratt and his team, a pediatrician team of three doctors and nurses and moms. Complete health care by family physician Dr. Kelly Pratt and nurse practitioners Mildred Sizemore, Gail Faria, Shannon Conley, and Heather Blair. Behavioral health services with Kimberly Davis with in-house lab testing and results, in-house x-ray and pharmacy and all the caring, knowledge and experience that these medical professionals represent at Hope Family Medical Center. Who says you can't have it all? Not Appalachian Wireless. We know what you want. Appalachian Wireless offers the hottest smartphones and unlimited data plans, all on the region's number one network for reliability and coverage. Appalachian Wireless has unlimited data plans for a single line or to fit families of all sizes. What more could you ask for? Just another way Appalachian Wireless proves better service, bigger savings. That's today's Appalachian Wireless, an East Kentucky network company. 
Just in at the seasonal shop, Little Llama baby products, bubble baths and lotions and oils, body and hair wash, soft, gentle, and parabon and silicone free, especially for baby, with all the accessories. And just in from Earth Lux, which is the finest in pure organic essential oils and soaps and skin and hair care, Himalayan salt lamps. A wonderfully healthy approach to an allergen and toxin free environment. Plus, new ladies and kids' fashions every week, and something perfect for all the grads and dads out there. Only at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Salyersville. Right now, get tools and toys even of the season for pennies on the dollar. Cash loans today on anything worth a dollar. Jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, guns, ammo, and more. With a new inventory daily at Parkway Gun and Pond, 349 Pond every weekday during lunch at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe for a total of five bucks. That's five bucks, taxes and all. You can get our famous chicken sandwich or two of our famous chicken biscuits with potato wedges and a drink or our steak sandwich or two steak biscuits with wedges and a drink or our famous foot-long hot dog with homemade chili wedges and a drink for five bucks. That's five deliciously awesome deals for only five bucks. Every weekday from 11 to 2 at your Sagersville Leagues. Up next, there is a lot of information that we'll cover that took place and was discussed in last night's Sagersville City Council meeting. Uh, there were also several exchanges between a Sagersville City Councilman and the mayor, the mayor who said that he was tired of having to explain the same things over and over each and every month and also tired of the attacks. Exchanges between the mayor and Councilman Tommy Bailey after Bailey questioned first the Sagersville Waterworks buying fuel from the city's tank that the mayor explained saved the city and the waterworks an estimated 50 cents per gallon. And after again, Councilman Bailey voted no on paying the city bills and voted no against the Municipal Road Cooperative Agreement, an agreement which would give the city emergency funds to make road repairs due to damages from storms and things of that nature which Bailey actually voted for in the last meeting, and in exchange after the second reading of the budget ordinance to which Bailey also voted no. You know, I'll give you the report that shows every, every, where everything comes out of everything. I mean, it's broke down to every little, on this report here, that y'all got. And then I just take it, and I go with that report right here that I, that I give y'all. And you go down and you can see what we spent. You how, got much, it, how much have you got in surplus right now that you know of? Surplus, no surplus. We got twenty. We got about thirty-three thousand dollars in the bank. That's what we got. We don't keep a surplus. We don't have a fund. We put a surplus in. Each of our, each of our funds has a budget, and money's put in it during the year. Whatever money they get from us. If it's for tourism, it comes from the restaurant tax. If it's a road fund, it comes from the road money we get from the state. If it's a general fund, it's from our taxes and our business licenses and our franchise fees and all that. Well, so, did I did I did I not take you wrong? Did, did you not say last? Meaning that you had a hundred some thousand dollars surplus? No, I never said I had a surplus. We had a hundred some thousand dollars. Of yeah, what? But that's to pay. Yeah, that's what? For what? And all these well, departments. Well, you're saying you got twenty some thousand. Where'd it go? Bills. I'm, if you'll go and look, I get tired telling you this, Tommy. If you go look over the last five years, if you go from quarter to quarter, you got money when you get take the money in, you go down. You take up, you go down. You take up, put. This ain't no different. The last six years, you've been here sitting here six years, and it's done it every year. It's done it every year. And then there was more discussion this time after the mayor outlined planned black topping projects while requesting at the same time that the city council keep open a $60,000 line of credit with the Sagersville National Bank in case the city needed to pay for the black topping before their next round of tax revenue came in. I've got uh, $10,000 worth of uh, black topping that we need to have done. I want to run short before the fiscal year is out, so we just want, we'd like to renew that. I'd just like to renew that line of credit we get and pay it back in when we get uh, when we get our tax money back in. Do the same things last year. Uh, the three projects we've got is about 500 foot on College Heights from uh, where Brian Montgomery's mother lives there, that section all the way up to uh, Johnny Lovey's. Uh, the entrance to Allen Drive, where that coverage caved in real bad there, all the way from the Allen Drive at the Parkway Drive, and the entrance to Bluegrass Cemetery, which is in bad shape. I make a motion we do that. 
But we pay him David. We that, the one thing we got coming up, uh, one of our big prices we got coming in July is our uh, lease on our of, of cars. And it's twenty seven. Well, we can't operate without money, but my thing is to go back and let's just Please, see what we can hope for next year not have to spend that yeah. bill. But this year I've added in the black top of which we didn't do the black top in last year. I, I think we need the black top done because we got some bad areas. You didn't do it last year, but you're waiting until next year. Well, short time. That's the way you think. So that's that's we'll let you say that. You say it. That's where it is. Who said that? Paul Burtz. Paul Burtz will Paul Burtz will say 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 Contrary to what Tommy thinks, we thought it was too high. Well, I and we talked of it once and, and the place shut down. And you ca we called to try to get a better deal, and mm -hmm. Jeff called out our dealer and closed the plant down. Last three years, not last year. Well, last year's only year we had money to do it with. So, um, but, um, so, but uh, that was the reason. Well, I'm glad to see it. Well, I'll be glad to see it put down when I see it, but mm -hmm. I'm glad to get it done. Well, we we'll get it done. Get it done for the election. Well, if I don't get done for election, the next mayor gets in here, they might not get done. I know where that money to the time, and you was on the board, you was on the city council when that was all going on. So I don't want to hear you complain about what I've been doing. With I did. I've seen anything about you. Yeah, you did. What did I say about it. you? Oh, well, you're doing right for election. Oh, I'm going to send you eight down before the election. No, no, I didn't want to send the time That's what I did. No, I wasn't. But what I have to say, we approved it, so we approved it we through you do it. It's all of us. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, well, I if, uh, what's that got the what's that touching ego for? Before it don't today? touch my ego. It just you know that you'd sit over and say that as much as I've done for this city and tried to one, oh. and I got it back, and now I got guys running that had it in the bad shape to start with, and now I worked my ass off for six years to get it back where it's halfway decent, and you know where I'm going to take up for somebody that broke it. So I don't want to hear about it. If you want to say something, say something else. You say it to me in private. But yeah, that's what ticks me off because I worked hard at making this city what it is. And you all have worked hard too. This is just canceled. I'm sorry. I'll get, I'll get off here. And I am running for mayor again for four years to keep this city going where it's going. Thank you. I'm done. All right. And before they adjourn, Councilman Tex Holbrook asked about Cole Branch. The mayor informed him that the Emergency Watershed Project Organization had actually been to Cole Branch, surveyed, took some photographs, and took that information back. And if they accept the responsibility and project, they will be making major repairs to Cole Branch, essentially from one end to the other in regards to mostly water flow issues with no cost to the city. The mayor then outlined the 4th of July schedule that we'll be talking about a little later on in the program, and then the meeting was adjourned. All right, now let's take a look at what's been here and on its way out. And listen, we have fared very well again. To be perfectly honest, I've spent uh, several hours today. I haven't had any local real-time weather monitoring equipment in the studio since we made the move at the first of the year. Uh, the other system we had there was not uh, cooperative with our new our new setup here and our location and our structure uh, and to be honest with you just as soon as I got it all wired in and turned on today uh, it started doing an update and I didn't have it online before the rains came but uh, the next couple of days we'll have real-time rain wind totals and comparisons and things of that nature bottom line is though we have fared well once again uh, folks like those in Harlan County just the images coming out of there are just un unreal seeing inches and inches of rainfall we've seen uh, moderate showers which are lightening up right now at the 630 ish time frame but if you will look out into the west there's more to come uh, still not into Kentucky as of yet just starting to make its way into Paducah the Bowling Green area uh, later on this evening and during the overnight we might get in on another round of showers to Tomorrow on your Wednesday also uh, a makeup for possibly another round thereafter so while we have once again uh, comparatively certainly to a lot of other counties in eastern Kentucky fared very well uh, it we're not out of the woods yet and neither are a lot of other, uh, neither are a lot of other folks who have seen like Harlan County one sale after another and some monster sales that have laid down several inches of rainfall in just a short amount of time so with that said here's what we can expect to see for the next 24 hours and beyond
Officially a flash flood watch in effect till 11 tonight, a low of 67 clouds and shower chances are diminishing. That threat is pretty much going to go by the wayside, but it will possibly crank back up during the overnight when another line rolls through. It's going to be hours from now. Tomorrow, though, 81 as you saw and then a little bit cooler tomorrow night. And once again, we'll see temperatures uh, making their way into your Thursday, right around 86, warming finger until Thursday morning, and then the heat rolls into town. Look at this. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, pretty much a lot of sun and a lot of heat. Saturday and Sunday, some heat that might make things a little unstable could give us a chance of showers, albeit a small chance. So in closing tonight, it goes without saying, but I feel as though I must keep an eye on those low-lying areas, streams, the river, the creek, whatever might be next to your home, that of a loved one. And if you can, of course, stay off the roads, stay in and stay dry, and then stay tuned to more of your news today, tomorrow night. Good Tuesday, and thanks for watching.